guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome, thanks for joining. I'm acrylic artist Joni Young and today I'm gonna to be showing you step by step how to paint this beautiful garden scene with a pond and this gazebo. I'm gonna be using a lot of colors today and brushes. You'll learn so many tips and techniques that are gonna help you become a better artist today. So make sure to give this video a like, leave a comment below and let me know what you think. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. I'm going to leave a list below of all, all the colors and brushes that we're using, the size of canvas, acrylic gesso that we're using, and without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Working on an 18 by 24 canvas, we're using white, purple, phthalo blue, light ultramarine blue, neon pink, neon orange, neon yellow, turquoise, sap green, and light grass green. We'll begin with a large blending brush and we'll pick up white, a little bit of yellow and a little bit of orange. We want to make a really soft peachy color. So we'll pull gently back and forth in the center at the top and down on the bottom where the pond will be. And then we're going to add a little bit in the center of the canvas as well. Okay, the next color we're going to be using with a clean brush is Neon Purple Violet. If you don't have this color, you can use Quinacridone Violet or Magenta. We'll blend it with a little bit of white. And we're going to pull up and flick. These will be our trees in the background, our forest. So we'll be going down sort of in a V-shape. Then we're going to stipple, tap in some branches on, some foliage on those trees. And then pull across and blend softly. We'll do some flicks for a reflection in our pond. So whatever colors that we're using above, we're going to incorporate that in our pond below. Switching over to a large fan brush, I'm going to pull into the phthalo blue, load both sides, a little bit of that purple, and a little bit of white. And we'll start layering this color over, pulling and flicking, and then tapping. And we'll tap gently side to side to create our trees and branches. We'll do the same thing off on the other side. And I'm switching over to a mini fan brush. This one's a little bit softer and I'm going to take light ultramarine blue, titanium white, push and pull that paint so it's Load it on your brush very well, and you've got it on the tip of your brush. We're going to pull a few little tree trunks and tap lightly for those branches. Making this area of the forest lighter and softer. It'll help make it look like it's farther away and create that perspective. I'm going to pick up a little bit more white now and make it even lighter right in this area. I still have a little bit of that blue left in my brush and I'm layering over the other ones so I'm picking up a little bit of blue each time I do that as well. And then we'll add some down in the reflection below. So I pull, flick and then wiggle with my brush 
You can use a little bit of water for this as well. And I'm going to make this pond a little bit larger than I originally planned. I'm going to pull some more reflections over on the left side, taking some more of that neon purple, blue, and white. Still using my mini fan brush. So play around with your brush and experiment making different ripples and lines and patterns in the water. Then I'll just blend softly with that blending brush again, barely touching the canvas. Taking a little bit of white and scumbling over very lightly. Okay, switching over to one of my favorite mop brushes now. You don't want to get it wet first, it'll ruin the shape. Tap it lightly into turquoise and phthalo blue. We're going to start layering in with some more trees and bushes over part of the phthalo blue back there. And then we're going to pull back and forth very lightly in a section in the middle. And I'm going to tap into more of that phthalo blue now. Start on the top left corner where it's going to be the darkest and gradually overlap part of that green. This is when we want to start building up to the foreground. So the further away the trees are in the painting they're going to be lighter and then there's going to be more contrast and depth towards the foreground. Now we'll bring some more over onto the right side. Just going to keep layering with colors. Now I've got turquoise and I'm going to start pulling in. I haven't washed my brush off at all. Just letting these colors blend naturally onto the canvas. Now I'm taking that rich, dark, sap green. And I'm going to tap in different sections for bushes or large foliage branches on those trees. And I'm going to start adding all the little bushes, grassy area here above the pond, on the edge of this pond, and then we're going to work our way up to some flowers and then that pretty little gazebo. Okay, I've got my large blending brush again. It's clean, a little bit damp. I'm going to pull and flick a little bit of that green off straight down, very lightly this will give you that instant reflection in the water and then we'll pull across very lightly, barely touching. Now if you end up pulling in too much green, it's easy to take it off as long as it's still wet. So a trick to keeping your acrylic from drying out too fast is to have the temperature in your studio a little bit cooler and have a spray bottle on hand. Now I've always been a really fast painter so I don't really have this problem but if I'm painting outside where it, when it's really warm um, I definitely have to have a retarder that will slow the drying process down. You can also buy acrylics that act like oils um, or vice versa so there's a few options out there for you guys and I'm just taking off a little bit of the green now scumbling and then wiping the excess off on a clean towel I have nearby. Okay, now I've got a large flat brush. I'm going to take that peach color that we made earlier and I'm going to start wiggling it in to create a little pattern, soft little ripples and wiggles. Reflecting that really pretty soft sunset glow back there. And some of the purple violet. Add a little bit of that. Ok, 
Okay, time to take some of that light grass green and pull side to side, way back there in the distance for a nice grassy opening area, little field maybe. And then using a little bit of white, and I'm using the corner. I'm just gonna show you guys right here on the edge, the corner, you can turn your brush and make it act as a little mop brush and add a few little bushes on the side by stippling carefully. So I just mixed a bit of that green with a little bit of white for that soft highlight. Light a little bit down here. Just going to keep building up all these greens, mixing turquoise, grass green, a little bit of white, sap green. It's fun to make your own colors, so definitely experiment with the paints that you have and see what colors and tones that you can create with them. Don't think that you need to buy every color uh, already mixed up on the shelf in a bottle. You can make up your own colors that nobody else has. It'll just make your art and your painting that much more original. Phthalo blue and sap green now. This will bring our land above and keep that water down below separate. So we're just making it look a little bit 3D here by adding that shadow and some more dark bushes. A few little ripples in the water for reflection. Okay, back to a mop brush, more of that green, tap in some soft round little bushes. We're going to be adding some beautiful red, orange and pink flowers to these in a little while. And with turquoise, a little bit of grass green, we'll add some highlights. And let's start building up this foliage here. We'll just tap out the rest of the paint that's in our brush, be a little bit lighter in color here. Okay, with another mop brush, it's clean, we've got neon yellow, a little bit of turquoise and white, and let's tap some highlights in here. Okay, after adding some of those reflections in the water, we're going to add a few little bushes back here, right at the base of those big ones, those big trees, using sap green. And now I've got my big oval brush. You guys have been asking me where I got this brush, what it's called. It has no writing on it. I haven't made it back to my art store yet because I was going to get back to you guys on that, but for now I'm just calling it a large oval brush. I've seen some similar ones on 
other uh, videos online and uh, they're calling them an oval brush so it's kind of in between a mop brush a stipple brush it's a uh, a really great brush and I can't wait to go out and get more of them different sizes so I've got my neon purple violet here and neon pink and I'm tapping in another big bush in front of those other ones and I decided I need some cadmium red so first I'm gonna go over with my light purple violet I love this as a filter over that blue it's so pretty and once it dries, it'll be a little bit darker than that. Okay, I've got my beautiful cad red now. And I'm gonna start tapping in that over top of the blue. Leaving, I don't wanna cover up all of that blue. I wanna have a little bit of it peeking through. Because you get such a nice contrast and the, cl the colors play on each other. And let's start adding some flowers down here. So just little taps, I'm using a lot of paint, I want it thick on the very tip of my brush. Okay, so and then I take neon pink with that cad red in my brush, so you get an instant highlight and pop of color. Now orange, and I'm not washing my brush out in between guys, I can just keep layering and picking up more colors. And we'll add some way back here too. Neon red, orange, cadmium red, pink. And then pastel colors. Take a bit of white and we'll get a really soft bubblegum pinky color. We need a nice balance. We're gonna use a lot of bright colors. We wanna have uh, some softer areas too so it's easier on the eyes. Okay, another mop brush. I know I've got a lot of these. <laughs> and we're taking some more of my neon purple, light ultramarine blue. And we'll start adding in our area here where we'll have our delphiniums. And then I decided I wanted to add uh, maybe there's a big lilac bush, a bunch of lilac bushes back here. So those same colors and then you can add a little bit of phthalo blue to them too looks so pretty it's in shadow back there so it's going to be a little bit of a cooler shadow on it and that's why i like to use that phthalo blue right there so i'm just adding a bit more reflection in the water with sap green And using a clean mop brush now, I'm going to take a little bit of neon yellow and some white. And we're going to add a very soft highlight back here. First on this pink bush, pinky orange bush back there. And load up our brush again. I love the glow that you get from this neon yellow and the white. Like, just look at it. It just adds so much life to this painting. I love it. So just a few of these. A bit more on this side. And then we'll add some more to the foreground. And we'll start working on adding some more reflections in the water and building, building up our foliage and more greens on the left side and so for some of the foliage here I'm going to use some turquoise so tap it on the bottom of your brush you don't want to add too too much we still want to have that nice dark contrast and then I'm going to add a little bit of phthalo blue with turquoise in there
it, taking a little bit of that red and orange, pulling down some reflections in the water, and then little bits of turquoise for some of those leaves. Back to our large flat brush. I'm going to take purple, orange, mix them together to create a, a kind of a dusty rose color. It's almost a little bit brown back here, and then we'll lighten it with a bit of titanium white. Let's pull in some more light purple violet and both blues. I didn't blend them together. I want to tap them for instant delphiniums and then you'll see all those different colors here. And then a reflection in the water. Let's incorporate some of this color down here. I want to add a big, big hydrangea bush and some reflections in the water. This light ultramarine blue is very complementary to our um, orange that we have down here. We've got little bits of orange in with our cadmium red, so these two colors are very complementary together. I'm taking my small mop brush, mixing the purple, violet, and blue. And I'll just, it's the perfect size at the end of this brush to create uh, each hydrangea flower. And then we'll highlight using a little bit of white. Tap lightly for those highlights so they look like oh, a bunch of little petals. Let's go over and add a few little highlights on each delphinium. Okay, let's switch over to our cadmium red, some orange, and we'll tap in some more roses down here. And let's layer over with some more. I've got neon purple violet and cadmium red. Makes a beautiful color. And then just neon purple violet up here. I love the intensity of this color. It's just one of those colors that I have to try to incorporate into each painting because it makes me happy to use it. I just love it so much. Okay, with a clean brush, let's take more of that light grass green neon yellow and start layering over this. A little grassy area where we're going to start adding our gazebo.
just going to tap in a few more branches right here. Take some sap green and do some more reflections in the water. And then add a few more little roses right down at the bottom of the canvas. And I'm going to just layer over a bit more of that neon yellow. And then reflect that in the water. Let's take our large blending brush, a little bit of white on it, and with the background dry now, we can start scumbling over a light sunny haze, making it look like it's really far away as well. This puts it instantly in the background. It was already soft enough, but once you do this light layer dry brush of white over it just gives it that misty dreamy magical look that I love so much and we'll just soften the water up a little bit uh, you want the water to be dry as well before adding this over okay I've got my medium sized filbert brush now I'm going to take some sap green and some of that purple I'm going to make a really dark color by mixing those two together and I'm going to start painting my gazebo here. Now it's going to be covered in flowers and I want them to be wisteria so I'm going to do some highlights with turquoise and white work on these pillars here first and then the flowers I add are going to be uh, purple the neon purple violet and the light ultramarine blue and a little bit of white and I'm gonna have like little vines hanging it's far away so you're not gonna be able to see too too much detail um, but that's the look I want to go for I want it to look like it's just overgrown with weeping wisteria So again, for these highlights, I'm using turquoise and white. And the darkest color is the purple violet mixed with sap green. And I'm going to be using three brushes for this gazebo, this liner brush. And then we had the small flat brush and a filbert brush. So I've got six pillars down there, and they're going to be... Uh, lighter on the bottom, midway down to the bottom, and then right underneath that cap at the top of those pillars is going to be dark in shadow. So we'll do lots of lines that curve down and then a few that go across, but they're kind of on an arch so it gives it that rounded look. So we'll do dark right in here at the top of each pillar. And I'm going to add a bunch of foliage down here to make it look like it's nestled in amongst all of these flowers in this garden. So we'll use sap green and then build up our flowers and vines from there. Mm. 
So we'll take um, our neon orange and we'll take some cadmium red. We've got so much on our brush to work with that once this dries, you'll be able to feel those flowers that they'll be kind of bumpy and, and pastel like. Let's add a little, it's just little blobs of color. I love impressionistic style of painting for flowers. I'm going to add a little bit of sap green and grass green just behind this. Sneak it in there very carefully. And then highlight with that neon yellow and white. Okay, adding more highlights using neon yellow and white, maybe a little bit of turquoise if you like. Got my liner brush. I'm just going to do a few little squiggles for some lines. Remember, we're not going to see too much detail on this, it's so far away. Switching over to a filbert brush now. You can use any size you like. I've just got my medium one again. I'm going to tap in lightly for some more foliage and I want to make it look like these vines and flowers are twisting and wrapping around each one of those pillars. Okay, now over to the liner brush where I can do some more detail here. I'm going to add another little layer of highlight and then start pulling those vines around. Okay, I'm really happy with how that looks. And it's just a sap green, neon yellow, and then the neon purple violet and light ultramarine blue for those flowers. So let's take a bit more of those two colors and dab tapping little blobs of paint here and there. That's all you have to do. And then I want it look I want it to look like this red tree is in the foreground now. This will kind of just set that gazebo a little bit further back not too too much 
So I've got my mini fan brush now, cadmium red. Tap just a few little branches. We've got a pretty little crimson maple tree right here, I think. More purple violet. And we'll build up this tree back here a little bit more. Once the paint dries and you can see the color it's going to be, you'll know if you need to add some more. So I'm just building up more color here. I'm loving those rich colors. Let's add some reflections in the water. So we'll just add a few more little ripples here in the water. And then we're going to add some more highlights way in the back and a few little sun rays. I always love to add some sun rays wherever I can in a painting. It just always creates that mood that's so inviting. Add a little bit of turquoise here and there. So with a clean brush, we'll take neon yellow and titanium white, start tapping in, some more soft highlights in here, and then scumbling around with whatever's left on our brush to make it look really soft. And we'll start pulling and flicking on an angle, so a few little diagonal lines and just instantly you get that beautiful beautiful light casting down on those little bushes I hope I'm inspiring you guys today to be bold with color and enjoy the process of painting color is so much fun to work with it's very good for your health very therapeutic and uh, the best advice I have for you guys when you're learning to paint is to not be too concerned with the outcome, the finished product. It's really important to try to just stay in the moment. I really can't say it enough, just enjoy the process. Now you can add as much highlights or as little as you like. Again, it's just white with a little bit of neon yellow and then softening up the water. So using my liner brush, I'm going to take white with neon pink and I'm going to make a few little taps in here. I love this pop of pink against that light yellow. It's so pretty and soft. And we'll add a little bit of white. Soften that up even more and then pull another little ray right there. I want to add some more of the color down on the bottom, so I'm going to use phthalo blue and a little bit of neon purple violet. I'm going to build up a little bit more shadow and contrast over on the left side. I'm just going to add a little bit more turquoise way back here. And add the finishing touches to this painting and then it'll be all done. So I'm going to use some sap green, more of that purple violet, and a little bit of phthalo blue for all of these shadows that I'm adding. 
So I want to thank you guys again so much for joining me today. If you'd like to make a small donation to my channel, it'll help me purchase more art supplies and better equipment for my videos to give you guys uh, better quality videos each week. You can click on a link below. It'll take you over to my Patreon page and uh, any dollar amount you like, every little bit helps you guys and I would appreciate it so much. Um, thanks again and I want to wish you guys happy painting. See you next time.